My name is Lukas Dutka, and in this ILSA project video tutorial, I will help you learn how to use Text on Top. Text on Top is a product that lets you display live subtitles on a remote computer or a projector wirelessly. It is often used when providing live subtitles in the venue of the event. Uh, as it is manufactured by a Dutch company, it is relatively easy to buy if you are located in Europe. Text on Top is a package that includes software and USB sticks. You will usually have a few such USB sticks depending on your needs. The Text on Top USB stick looks like a regular memory stick and can be plugged to any computer. Indeed, it acts like a flash drive and contains Text on Top software. But the USB stick also comes with a small antenna that allows this device to both send and receive text wirelessly. To display subtitles, you will need a minimum of two text on top sticks. One connected to the device on which the subtitles are produced, and the other one responsible for receiving and displaying the subtitles. There might be more than one receiver. Once you insert the USB stick into a computer, it will be seen as a flash drive and you can start using it immediately. There is no installation required. First, open the folder to view files and then start the text on top software by double clicking on the EXA file. You will then be asked to choose the mode you want to work in. Let's stop here to explain different modes. The ones you are more likely to use uh, include speech to text reporter, the presenter mode, and the individual mode. As a live subtitler, you will use the first mode as it will allow you to enter text. Text on top allows you to work using different methods of producing live subtitles. As a re-speaker, you can use speech recognition software to dictate the text, but it's also possible to use a steno machine or a velotype. Uh, a velotype is a type of keyboard. Of course, you can also type with a regular QWERTY keyboard. Text on top accepts all these text inputs. Let's explore this mode further. Uh, to do this, we need to have a look at the text on top application. This is the window you will see when you launch text on top in the reporter mode. The main area is where you can insert the text. This text will be sent through the text on top transmitter to other TOT devices that will display it. Let's try to insert our first text. At the top, you can select the language you're working in. My language now is English, but I can change it to any other language, for instance, to Polish, or I can keep it in English. This area shows you whether you're online or offline. If you are offline, the text that you type will not be transmitted to other TOT devices. You can also control how the text is displayed on a big screen. That's the presenter mode we will discuss later on. The text can be displayed as a full screen or as lines of text at the bottom or at the top of the screen. This will be useful uh, when you want to display the text on the same screen where a speaker displays his or her presentation. Uh, now let's focus again on this main area where you insert the text. If you are online, all the text here becomes immediately transmitted to other text on top devices. This means that if you make an error, everybody will see it at once. However, there's a way to avoid it. It's called pre-edit area. To enable it, we need to have a look into the preferences. To access preferences, uh, you need to click on the Edit Preferences button. Uh, here you have a number of tabs, and in the tab called More, you have an option called Show Respeaking Pre-Edit Window. Uh, once we enable it, this new area appears. We can dictate or type the text here and it will not be sent to other text on top devices unless we manually decide to send it. 
we do that by pressing enter. We can also use control plus enter and this can be customized in the preferences. So let me type a sentence. Let's say this sentence contains a mistake. I quickly spot this mistake, uh, I fix it and then I send the sentence. It is now displayed to all the viewers. This way I'm able to spot the error and correct it and the viewers will only see the final version. Let's now briefly look at other options we have available here so as to give you an idea of all the things you can do with text on top. Let's open preferences again. In the first tab called text input you can set up a speed monitor that will alert you if you create too much text. This is especially useful if you're using a steno machine. Steno typists can produce text at incredible speeds but the reading speed of viewers is limited. You can set up this alarm in this area here. The second tab allows you to connect with steno machines or other devices you might use for text input. It's also possible to connect with a colleague who also uses text on top. When you connect as editor, uh, you can do that in the aux tab, you will see the text that your colleague uh, click connect as editor and you can see a uh, text uh, that your colleague is dictating and you will be able to work as a live corrector. Uh, if you are sitting close to a screen where you want to display your live titles and you connect the screen as a secondary screen uh, to your laptop, uh, in the local appearance tab you can customize how the text will look on this secondary screen. So you can choose the text color, the background color, the font size, whether the text should be hyphenated, you can adjust the margins. Uh, similarly, uh, in a more common scenario in which you use the wireless connection, you use another USB stick uh, to display the text, uh, you will use the remote appearance tab to customize how the text looks. Finally, uh, in the wireless connection tab you can select the radio frequency and the radio frequency channel you are using. If my colleague already uses channel 3 for English then I will choose channel 4 for Polish. As you can see there are lots of options and text on top can be customized to work in many different ways. Let's come back to the beginning you know, when we selected the mode of operation. Okay, once you have the text, you need to display it to the participants of the event who want to read subtitles. For this, you need to use another USB stick and you need to connect it to another device. It might be a laptop, which is connected to a large screen or a projector. This time, when you launch the text on top software, you will choose the presenter mode. By default, this mode will display a full screen view of the text on a black background. When you launch it, there are some settings you can change. You can either choose to display the text in the full screen mode by default all the time, or you can allow the other text on top device, the one you use for creating text, to control the display mode. This way you will be able to change it remotely. USB receivers use a certain frequency channel. This will be important if you provide more than one language. Then you need to select the right frequency channel, depending on which text you want to display. If you look back at the video lecture that accompanies this unit, you will see illustrations of a number of events where text on top was used. Do you see any examples here? Yes, all these screens were controlled by text on top software. Here you can see the text displayed through a cinema projector onto a big cinema screen, also through text on top. As you can see, text on top is quite a universal solution that you can use in numerous settings. Let's now go back to the modes we have available. The individual mode allows participants of an event to run text on top app called Vision on their individual devices, laptops, tablets or even smartphones. This is what the interface of the Vision app looks like. You see the text in the main part of the app. 
and then you have lots of customization options so that every participant can see the text in the way he or she wants. You can select the language, you can change the color of the text, you can clear all the past text to only see the new text that arrives now. You can switch to the full screen mode. A very useful option is to, the one that lets you adjust the size of the text. You can even make the text appear in bold or choose whether the words at the end of the line should be hyphenated or not. Finally, line spacing can also be changed if you want to have more or less free space in between the lines. As you can see, the Vision app gives each user lots of options to customize the look of the text. However, it also comes with an important limitation. Every participant needs to receive a text on top USB stick. This means that you will need to have a large amount of these sticks. Finally, text on top has some additional modes. One of them is called Braille Display, and it makes it possible to display the text for the blind users to read through a Braille reader. Another interesting mode is Video Production. This one will allow you to interface with such live streaming tools as vMix. You will learn more about those in the next unit. This mode also allows you to save live subtitles as an SRT file with timecodes. As you can see, Text on Top is a truly powerful tool that can be used in lots of different ways. In this video tutorial, I explain how Text on Top works, what are the different modes of operation, and what are the most frequently used features. I hope you enjoyed listening to this video tutorial offered to you by the ILSA project. Thank you for listening.